live from our hurricane headquarters with real-time analysis from some of the nation's top meteorologists. This is Tracking the Tropics, powered by Bose Electric. Day two of hurricane season producing our first name storm of the year. Tropical storm Arlene meandering south in the Gulf of Mexico, but fringe impacts being felt in Florida at this very moment. We're live here with the chief meteorologist here at WFLA, myself, J.B. Buno, Jeff Berardelli. We're going to be talking about tropical storm Arlene and answering your questions here on Facebook Live and across our social media platforms. Hello there to you, folks. As I mentioned, JB and Jeff Baradelli, our chief meteorologist here at WFLA, live with you on stream to talk about Tropical Storm Arlene. And yes, fringe impacts being felt right now in the central part of Florida. Before I send things over to Jeff to break down the forecast and what we're looking at here on satellite, we want to answer your questions in the Facebook Live comment section. Hello to our Facebook Live audience. We hope you have a great weekend. Uh, ahead of that, we're going to be answering your questions with hashtag HeyJB, hashtag HeyJeff. You see it in the silver stripes on the left and right side of your screens underneath our name. If you use hashtag hey Jeff or hashtag hey JB with your comment, we'll, of course, get to it coming up here in just a moment in our interactive Q&A. But for now, Jeff, what are we looking at here in the Gulf? A practice storm? Yeah, that's yeah, a good way of putting is, it, right? This is a practice storm, you know. Uh, so it, it's barely a tropical storm. It has just enough convection and enough of a circulation to be considered a tropical system. And it's a tropical storm Arlene, so it's no longer a tropical depression. It is a tropical storm. Now, one thing I want to mention, JB, which may be interesting to folks. So if you remember yesterday and today, it's tropical depression 2. Then wait a second. It's tropical storm Arlene. Why isn't it the B? Uh, you know, why isn't it the B name? And it's because we actually had a tropical depression in January, I think it was. Now, it wasn't named a tropical depression in January. National Hurricane Center went back months later, looked at the satellite and said, oh, yeah, this looks like it was subtropical. So they named it subtropical depression number one. Uh, and it never became a try. Actually, the truth is it was it actually did briefly reach tropical storm status. So why they didn't call it posthumously tropical storm Arlene? Honestly, I don't know. As a lot of meteorologists were a little confused by that. Nevertheless, we already had a tropical depression. So tropical depression number two is what they named this. But because we never named the one in January Arlene, this is tropical storm Arlene. OK, so if there's any confusion about that and why all of a sudden we have Arlene, but yet it was TD2. It's that's that's part part partly at least explained to you. So as you can see on the satellite right now, uh, it, you know, it, it is spreading its wings towards us. So we're on the very periphery of the system and it's spreading some showers. And so just like yesterday, we had that blow up of storms kind of on the eastern edge of the system. Once again, there's a blow up of storms on the eastern edge of this system. So essentially, this is a band, very outer band, the very periphery of the circulation of the storm. And so we keep getting these heavy downpours, not moving particularly quickly with a lot of lightning. Yesterday, some places had over four inches of rain. Today, we're going to see some places that see three to four inches of rain. And you know what? Most folks are happy about it. Most folks not complaining because we've had uh, an extreme to severe drought across this area for the past couple of months or so. So we're getting some much needed rain. Hurricane hunters in there today, they found peak Winds up there in the atmosphere of around 52 miles an hour. That barely qualifies for 40 mile an hour winds at the surface. And so it's been named a tropical storm. There are the latest stats from Arlene. Winds 40 miles an hour. It's moving south, right? This is an odd. People have been writing in saying, Jeff, is this normal? Do we normally see storms push to the south? Not really. But then again, it's it's not. I mean, we get storms in June, June 1st. It's, it's odd, of course, that we'd see a storm literally on the first day of, of hurricane season. But, um, but if storms are going to um, move in weird directions, it's going to happen on the periphery of the season, right? In June or November, when, you know, we still have steering flow across the United States and it's not purely tropical forcing. JB, I see you have a, a question. Well, yeah, we have questions coming in. Uh, we see uh, people using the hashtags in our comment section. But, you know, that sensation when you're laying down flat on the floor, you look up and you're, you're seeing the ceiling and everything looks like it's upside down, you know, that sensation. Mm -hmm. That's what yes, I'm looking at. It does. It, it, it's it does. so bizarre to see mm -hmm. a system yeah. in the Gulf yeah. heading downward. The bottom line is that when systems form on the edge of the season, they do really weird stuff because if you are if you think about it, we're still transitioning out of a spring wintertime pattern into a purely summertime pattern. When you're in a purely summertime pattern, the winds that steer everything are tropical winds. They come out of the tropics. These winds are still coming from Canada to some degree. That's what's going on here is we have a wind kind of still blowing from Canada. We're still not 
fully in rainy season and fully in tropical season yet. That's the yeah. Reason. The yeah. word I used to describe the system yesterday on our first episode or premiere uh, for this it's season, track in the tropics, was yeah. Well, dizzy, dizzy. close, close. Yes. Like I remember, dizzy. I, oh, okay. But drunk mm -hmm. is another word mm -hmm. that we could mm -hmm. potentially use to describe the feeling with mm -hmm. this system now heading yeah. south on the second day of hurricane right. season. But All this, right. What's great about it is it remind it doesn't it's not having a big impact. It's giving us rain what we need, right? And it's also reminding us that. Tropical season is here. Hurricane season is here. It's time to get ready just in case there's a big storm in the middle of the season. If you have not been part of our interactive Q&As here on Track in the Tropics powered by Bose Electric, we're going to break it down here for you as we look at the spaghetti models. We'll come back to that in a second. But it's really simple, folks. This is how it works. You use one of our hashtags, hashtag HeyJeff or hashtag HeyJB. Ask a question with that comment, and we can put it up on screen just like this. Kendra Blanchard wants to know anything to be expected all the way up on the northern Gulf Coast in Alabama. No, it's this. moving away from you, which is great, right? Actually, it's going to help you. As it moves away, it'll pull in some drier air. So if you want somewhat more comfortable air, a little bit, teeny bit, may in fact infiltrate Alabama. And if you're watching from Florida, we are going to get some drier air in here starting later on Sunday into Monday and Tuesday. The dew points will drop. It'll be a little more comfortable and a little less summer-like. So actually, this has turned out to be good news for most folks. Although, as you can see, that spaghetti, and by the way, I should mention, I am actually having spaghetti for dinner tonight. But that's beside, <laughs> this is what it's making me think about here. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, southern Florida, is it may get clipped by some extra rain. But that's it. it it's going to weaken... And once it gets to Cuba, even before there, it's probably just going to weaken to a post-tropical cyclone, meaning it's going to lose its tropical characters, kind of get sheared apart. And so all that's going to be left is moisture. You know, it's interesting. I was talking about how this is not expected to make landfall in Florida. That's right. But the spaghetti models are showing us a hook towards Miami. Right, but but the difference is here that it's it's project it's projected to go in that direction, but it will lose its tropical right. characteristics before it makes that turn back towards Florida. If it's so, a, if it's a if it's a tropical depression, if it's yes. downgraded to a tropical depression, yes. can it still technically make a landfall? Yes, it can, but it's not likely to be. It's likely to be a post-tropical cyclone. Right. So it's going right. to lose all of its tropical. It's going to get sheared apart. And then its remnants are going to move into South Florida. Let's talk about the weekend really quickly. I, I know when it comes to the weekend in Florida, uh, people are thinking about Disney World, Busch Gardens, SeaWorld, yeah. Universal. Right. Uh, we're talking about significant impacts Saturday and Sunday? Uh, not as significant. But, yeah, we're still calling for about a 60% chance of storms tomorrow. That is above normal for this time of year. And we're looking at radar right now. This is what the radar looks like right now. And I want to zoom into a couple of locations and show you what you have. So heavy downpours right now across Tampa Bay, Waimama, Ruskin, just to the north of Ruskin, approaching Riverview. Also, take a look uh, uh, from Palm Harbor north to Tarpon Springs. Heavy rain up to around the Newport Ridge area. It's one area. So we head to the south. Uh, heavy downpours extend inland, Hardy, DeSoto, Highlands County, eastern parts of Manatee County. Lighter stuff around the Bradenton area. We head north to the Nature Coast. This is where you really need the rain, where yesterday you didn't get as much heavy rain. You escaped it the past couple of days. There are some heavy downpours you know, kind of equally spaced between Pasco, Hernando, and now moving into Citrus County around to Homosassa. Uh, but still, the heaviest rain has been from Tampa Bay and Hillsborough and Pinellas County south and east, and that's the that's where it's staying. Anyway, you know, it's going to be somewhat similar, JB, tomorrow. Yeah. But I do think we're, and here's, here's kind of a wider view, I do think we'll see a, a few less storms tomorrow as the storm continues to press to the south. You can see it, there's a little bit less tomorrow afternoon. And then as we head into Sunday, there's probably a few less. But there's still going to be passing storms. not going to ruin your day. Just prepare for a half hour, hour of rain. And once it, once it moves through, it should be done for the day, we hope. Scattered underneath yep. one of these. Typical summer weather, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Just a slightly the, rainier than normal day. Again, you see the silver stripes. We, here, Jeff, let's try to point. You see it right down here. Yeah. Hashtag, hey, JB. I don't think I'm capable of doing I, that. Well, you're a meteorologist. Yeah, you but no, be this able is weird to, to me. Uh, right <laughs> there. Hashtag hey JB, hashtag hey Jeff, and we can answer your question in our interactive QA powered by Bose Electric. J Cash Money. All right, how about that right. name? Hashtag like hey it. Jeff. Will Clearwater have any tropical weather? Yeah, just the downpours. You know, just honestly, if you didn't know there was a tropical storm off the coast, you would just think that oh, was normal everyday rain, right? We're getting those daily thunderstorms now. We're in rainy season. This is just enhancing that. That's all. This is just enhancing our normal pattern. So instead of having, let's say, a 40% chance of rain, we're having a 60 or 70% chance of rain. That's all. How about this one from Carl? We were talking about this a moment ago, Carl. Isn't it odd for a storm in the Gulf to, to take a southward uh, turn? And, uh, and yeah, we, I feel like everything's upside down. Yeah, but it's so weird for a meteorologist because I didn't even think about that. It didn't even occur to me that it was... It, it Of course, it occurred to me it was going in the, the wrong direction, but... 
to a meteorologist, we, there's nothing abnormal about it because it's just it's just a, it's just the it's just not the middle of season. When it's not the middle of season, things tend to move in a different direction. Maybe we just have yeah. PTSD from Ian, and we're just we. I'm just, we just I'm see just that happy this is not that it's not moving direct. Honestly, I'm just relieved it's not moving directly towards Tampa because that's not that only not only ruins your weekend, it ruins JB's weekend and it ruins my weekend too. Ruins so I don't mind weekend. having a storm off the coast as long as it stays off the coast. But, but I do want to point out, we've been talking about it all week. Uh, the benefit of there being rain in our area, the, there are areas that could benefit from some rain. Uh, in the Sunshine State, correct? Uh, for sure. And take a look right there. So that those are rainfall totals through Monday. Now, most of the rain is going to happen today and tomorrow, a little bit on Sunday. Um, and the downpours, if you look just away from the coast on the nature coast, there are some places that could get three inches, maybe a little more. Uh, you go further inland south of Tampa and you're, you're hardy to Soto Highlands County, and there are a lot of bullseyes that are up to four or five inches. And then um, as, you, as you head south uh, into Manatee and Sarasota, same thing. There are bullseyes probably around I-75 and generally right along I-75, give or take, that are going to see three, four inches of rain over the next couple of days. So actually, this has been a good news story. We're catching up pretty quick on the deficit of rain that we've had since January around here. So yeah, things are getting a little better. Jeff, give me one, just one more second sure. here. Uh, I'm gonna. What we're going to do is we're going to load up a, a VO. Can you just give me another 15 seconds? I can't. I don't have that to spare. <laughs> I guess I have no choice. What choice uh, do I really have? You're in, you're in control. You're the yeah, wizard that, behind that, the that's, curtain. That's I, true. I, no, yeah. actually, I, I think I, I beat it by about 10 seconds. Okay. Check this out if this is indeed accurate. We'll come to this. This is loading up in our system oh, now. Oh, there right, we so go. This is, this is uh, courtesy of Jim Hockett, one of our photojournalists here. This is a time lapse He shot right it from now. our roof. Last two oh, nice. hours. Check you didn't get out. struck by lightning, did you? Let's go full screen. Oh, so, it's our tower cam. <laughs> so this is our WFLA tower cam located in downtown Tampa. This is a time lapse over the last couple of hours. I just love watching the sky. It's flu First of all, the atmosphere is a fluid. Like water is a fluid, right? But the atmosphere is a fluid. There's fluid motion there. And I just love watching, you know, the clouds kind of bubble. It's almost like they're boiling in the atmosphere and all that heat and humidity kind of when they reach a certain level in the atmosphere, the base of the cloud, all of a sudden they condense. They're forced to condense because it's colder up in the upper atmosphere. So it's when that warm and humid air kind of meets that colder air up up up, up top. And we get those uh, we get those boiling clouds. I just I just love I just love watching. I just love the science of of weather and, and climate. It's kind of cool, isn't it? Yeah. It's a little, I'm a little bit, bit of a nerd, but it I looks yeah. a bit like a screen. Who saver. doesn't love a nice thunderstorm? I mean, it, as long I as you're mean, inside, I most people love watching thunder, like you know, watching lightning, watching the storms kind of boil. As long as you're inside, but I've I, met, I just got rained on in Carrollwood. Oh, like, yeah. <laughs> it was pretty bad. Sounds like was, a personal problem. Jimmy. I was. It was a personal <laughs> problem. But uh, yeah, I wasn't thinking in that moment. Wow, what a wonderful thunderstorm. Yeah. Well, love, you never did when you're when you're walking out of Publix and you're like, oh, am I gonna make I, a mad right. dash or should I wait? And if you wait, inevitably you end up waiting for like a half hour. You know, it's just, it's just the way it is. Yeah, that's that's the reality of it. Let's go. Yeah, I want to clear up any confusion, Justin, because I see your question, your hashtag, hey, Jeff, is this going to make landfall anytime soon? Unless a, a land mass just appears out of nowhere, mm -hmm. like a movie in the yeah. middle of the Gulf of Mexico. We're not I mean, talking Cuba. about land. Yeah. So if it's going to make landfall, it's going to make landfall in Cuba. We think it's probably going to lose its tropical characteristics before it gets there. So, yeah, it's not really making landfall. Again, this is a practice storm. This is just to remind everyone, hey, it's hurricane season. Let's pay attention. Let's get ready. And let's remember what happened to Fort Myers last year. Let's hope that it doesn't happen to us, but understand that if it had happened here, the damage would have been even worse. We have more people. We're more densely populated. There's more stuff in harm's way. We're a little less prepared because we haven't had a hurricane, a really, really big one in a very long time. So we need to be prepared as if something like Ian could potentially hit us. Hopefully it won't, uh, but you never know. And, um, you know, I, I always say this. We are... And I, and you know, you might argue with me about this. There are meteorologists who might who might say that they don't they disagree, but I think Tampa is the most vulnerable city in the United States to a hurricane. I really do. It's because we have so much water. There's so much water here. The bay is 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 a perfect funnel. The the storm comes in the right direction. It will funnel that water into Tampa Bay, and then all of the most populated parts of St. Pete and Tampa, you get flooded. This is our uh, last five minutes here on this edition of Tracking the Tropics, powered by Bose Electric with. Max Fender 8, Chief Meteorologist and Climate Specialist Jeff Baradelli. I'm JB Buno. We're going to really hyper-focus in on Facebook Live comments, uh, including on some other Facebook pages like WKRG in Mobile, Alabama. Kathy has this question. Hey, JB, how active will the 
Gulf of Mexico hurricane season B for 2023? That is a great, a great question. So first of all, I have the seasonal forecast up there. So right now, the seasonal forecasts are calling for slight, about average, about an average season. Now, with that said, um, Colorado State University had predicted 13 a couple, like a month or two ago. Their new updated forecast from yesterday was 15. So they've upped the their hurricane season prediction a little bit, and that's because it is toasty, toasty, toasty warm in the Atlantic. I mean the warmest we've ever seen, and not by a little, by a lot, beating records by, by more than you would imagine we possibly could. So that would bode well for more hurricanes, right, or at least stronger hurricanes. But the opposite is happening in the Pacific Ocean. Uh, in fact, I think perhaps, yep, there it is. So there's the, so when we look at the Atlantic, when we see red colors or orange colors, that means water temperatures are above normal. The whole tropical Atlantic is above normal, with the exception of a sliver of the Gulf. But that's fleeting. That, that could go away in a matter of a couple of days. That would turn yellow because it's a little shallower there. It doesn't take much to really heat that up. But the opposite is, is happening in, in the Pacific for us. And the El Nino that's developing, all that warm water off of, um, off Peru, uh, that actually would usually uh, really tamp down on the number of, of tropical storms and hurricanes we'd have. It normally would cause a lot of wind shear in the Atlantic, and it would destroy developing storms. So that actually, um, you know, bodes well for us in terms of less systems, especially in the Gulf and the Caribbean. We just, we've never seen a situation like this where it's so warm in the Atlantic, at the same time as we have what's going to probably be a strong El Nino fighting and duking it out. We've never seen since we've been tracking this a situation like this. So we don't actually know exactly what's going to happen. I can tell you at Penn State, um, actually, no, University of Pennsylvania just came out with their forecast today. They're calling for 16 named storms, averages 14. So, you know, the later, the forecasts that have been coming out over the past couple of weeks have been a little bit more active than the ones that came out earlier, just because we see how warm the Atlantic is and it's hard to refute such a warm Atlantic is being a big ingredient in the, in the season. Let's go to this question, and it comes in from Judy, locally here in the Tampa Bay area. Hashtag hey Jeff, what to expect in the next four hours in Lutz and in North Tampa, Tampa? Yeah, so I'm going to try to go backwards with my graphics, if if my graphics will allow it, JB. So uh, if you can put the graphic, I can't actually see them. Okay, so let me see if, I don't know if it's going to work or not, folks, so just bear with me here. Let's see if we can get my graphics to move backwards. Hmm, no. Uh, okay, I'm just going to have to tell you then uh, what's going to happen based upon the radar. Yeah, so I know yesterday got hit hard in the loots. About four inches of rain there. There was some, some hail, some strong winds, 40, 50 miles an hour. So far, a lot of the stuff is is evading you. There's stuff north of you. Nothing is moving very fast at all. Everything's kind of stalled out. So, look, you'll probably get some some storms, but nothing is moving. Everything's moving extraordinarily slow right now. So... All I can say is at some point you'll probably get a downpour. <laughs> but it it shouldn't be anytime soon. You do have some light rain around you right now. And the stuff to the north of you isn't really moving in your direction. I think you might escape the downpours, at least in the short term. The time is now 4.30 Eastern, Jeff. I think you're in the next yeah, half I hour. Yeah, I have, a, I have to go downstairs and be on TV in just a few minutes. So I think we're going to have to maybe take one more question. And All right, then, no, you, uh, can, yeah. you can. I have your exit shot up if you'd like. <laughs> uh, folks, um, no, actually, that's it for the, the Q&A. Everybody, the Max Fender 8 weather team, including Chief Meteorologist and Climate Specialist Jeff Baradelli, is going to be, they're going to be, of course, tracking Tropical Storm Arlene, but this is not really headed in our direction. This is heading south, but there are still storms and fringe impacts worth tracking, of course. Rebecca Barry's downstairs right now in our weather center. Jeff is about to join her there, yep. and of course, our coverage continues this weekend here on WFLA News Channel 8, your NBC station. All right, all bye, of, everybody. All your Tracking the Tropics episodes, you can find it right now on Tracking the Tropics. Dot TV, and we'll have the latest over the course of this weekend here on WFLA.com, the WFLA app. For everybody out there watching, have a happy, healthy, safe weekend across the Tampa Bay area, across the state of Florida, and across the United States. And we'll see you next time on Tracking the Tropics, powered by Bose Electric. Find Tracking the Tropics on these platforms. And for storm updates, the latest models, and helpful resources, visit trackingthetropics.tv.